Now well into the Chakwa River, it was quickly obvious our travel would mainly be comprised of walking and portaging, and yes, even some paddling. So the one thing about paddling into the sun is that uh, there's some huge reflections on the water, and the best thing that can help is having polarized uh, sunglasses so they help to cut the glare even with the cut of the cutting of the glare still it's hard to see in the water especially if it's dark and we've got dark bottom water here but there's boulders here so we occasionally bang into them so i'm kneeling up high just to see if i can see them uh, to avoid banging into them but it's still it's still not that easy So it's just that uh, we're coming up to a big uh, beaver dam. So it looks like it's maybe about what, two, three, no, two feet maybe? Yeah, lift over time. Backing onto the beaver dam was another shallow restriction filled with rocks and big boulders, which of course meant portaging. Nice. Okay, <laughs> right now I'm high up on an erratic. If you look down, you can see the guys below. And uh, just looking down the river, there is water down here. And so we can paddle up a little bit more. But uh, our paddle has been interdispersed with deeper water, marshy looking water for a little bit of paddle, for a break, really it is. And then we go to get to some shallow sections with these huge erratics and boulders along the river edge. It's actually actually really, really beautiful. It's just, it's not obviously easy to, to make distance. We enjoy the little spots of, of water as a reprieve from the hauling and the portaging, but we're slowly making distance. And that's exactly why I didn't plan a lot of distance for this section, because I didn't know how difficult um, it was gonna be. And I didn't think it was going to be easy either, and so it's true to its form, it's not easy. So we're, right now what we're doing is we just kind of landed the canoes there, and uh, we're now just uh, taking a few minutes to have a break, uh, snack, and get rehydrated, and then we'll continue on. Wow. Can you see that huge ass erratic? That's massive. It is just like right in the river, in the shallow river here. This is uh, absolutely incredible. You know, we were seeing some big erratics on the creek, and uh, you know, they're good size, but nothing, you know, humongous, but big enough. And out of nowhere, it just, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just totally blown away. So look at this. It is huge. It, it might, you might not see the perspective here because you don't have anyone for reference. But I'm going to see if I can get a shot with the guys at the base of it. But it just like, you know, we knew this creek was narrowing and then all of a sudden this appears. It just, ah, uh, wow. I'm just blown away. Just done. And uh, you know what? It's such a privilege to come here. Despite how difficult it is, despite being covered with a cloud of black flies, it's these moments that truly make uh, these tri this trip worth it. Here's another view of the radic from inside the forest. Just massive. Uh, the guys have just gone in the bush. Uh, there's another big erratic actually beside this one just in the forest. And they're scouting out a way because the, the creek bends over to the right and there's another big marsh over there where we can paddle. But they're seeing if there's a way through there. And if not, we'll have to pick our way 
through this creek uh, along this big uh, radic and make our way down to the, the marsh. After some time scouting in the forest, it was decided we'd portage our gear behind the erratic and take the canoes along the riverbed. Go ahead, Bill. Oh, you want to go this way? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, I broke the rock. <laughs> Breaking rocks in the hot sun. So this is the back side of this big erratic and it's split. You can see the, the crevice here and rocks stuck in between there. And then on this side, there's another one. So we're basically just walking in between the two. Wow, it's stunning. You see these guys just uh, Running their way through it. Ugh. Squeak the squeeze. It's tight in here. Ugh. I had to wave in two hands, so it's a little hard to try and film this. Okay, <laughs> this is what happens when you're too wide. Um, I wonder if I can go around the other way. Yeah, I'll be able to go through that way. Let me see if I can go this way. All right, it's just boulder hopping now. So I'm gonna go this way. Up on some boulders. There we go. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a tangled mess. I see them going across on that side. You can see them in the bush over there. So what I'm going to do is probably try to find my way down there. It's not going to be easy, but uh, that's not easy. It gets narrow there too. Okay. I think I gotta shut this down because I gotta use two hands to get down here. So I'm in this, I had to go around, but I'm stuck in this thicket of cedar. It's tight in here. Everything's grabbing the barrel. There we go. What makes it worse is I got this barrel pouches, which are great because I have access to water and things like that, but it was just too wide for me to squeeze through. So, I'm gonna see if I can get through this way. Yeah, okay. I should be able to make it from here. Here we go. So, we're definitely not gonna bring the canoes through here. There's just no way we can get, get those canoes through here. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take uh, the creek and just manhandle the canoes down. Okay. It's not, now a lot more space here. Yeah, the barrel is just too wide with the pouches. I couldn't squeeze through. I tried to go up, and so I had to go around the other side of the, the boulder. So, where? Down that way? Oh, okay. Oh, I see your pack. Now for the canoes, which entailed a combination of portaging and walking.
At this point, besides seeing the swarms of black flies, you can get a better sense of scale with the canoes in the picture. Needless to say, despite the extra work involved, we eventually got to open water. Okay, have you ever seen an orange crayfish? He's pre-cooked. <laughs> pre-cooked. Yeah. Sushi. There you go, buddy. You see him stands out right in the water. Look at that. Pretty. I think he's the king out here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a big one. Oh. All right. <laughs> if you haven't figured it out by now, our paddle wasn't going to last long. This was the routine. Ah, we can go right to it. I think we could do a lift over. Yeah. Well, we'll park right beside it and take a look. Oh, I think there's some multiple drops down there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's probably better just to walk it, eh? Yeah. So judging by the coloration of the rocks, oh, it's tangled up. Um, this part would normally be flooded in the spring or at high water levels, which it isn't now. And you can see the lichen at top, so. But right now, it's low. It's a nice little, oh, guys, nice little waterfall here. You won't even call it a waterfall. And you got some big erratics over there. Let's see if I can get over this one. Whoa. Look at the size of these boulders. Incredible. So beautiful here. So rugged and so beautiful. Ugh. You gotta be a little bit of a goat. This is an area that Nanita would hate. She's not a big fan of jumping from rocks to rocks. I don't blame her, it's risky, but, but it's got to be done. Okay, let's see if I can go down this wall without sliding. So look at these metal pieces that uh, DQ found. They're solid pieces of metal, and you can tell it's been worn over the ages of corrosion, and I don't know, it's all pitted. It's a oh, is it? Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, for the wood, yeah. right? Oh, okay, cool. This pair of metal pieces we found combined to make a PV. If the straight point is hooked at a 90 degree, then it becomes a cant hook. Both of these tools are used to separate and move logs. Except it was found all the way up top here. He went up on the rock. And, oh, very high water. Wow. <laughs> Rocks everywhere. Yet again, we approached another impasse, but this wasn't just the usual one. This was where the Shakwa River would begin to drop significantly down towards Agnes River. Scamper. 
Just in case. <laughs> it was over logs over here, so it was softer. But we had to get out because over here is all rocks. So you can go over there until you ram into the logs, and then you have to get out and then just push o push over here. This part was going to involve a lot more work, as it had a major waterfall, so we decided to stop for a quick lunch before we began tackling this section. Okay, so uh, there's obviously evidence of logging here. We don't know if it's a dam or if it's a road, uh, I'm sorry, a road bridge, um, but there's like logs just piled in, in different areas, like over there as well. It's, it'll be hard for you to see, but um, it's just amazing that they drove logs down here because there's so much rock. But so right now we're going to head down. There's there's about a 65 meter drop. The creek goes down and it just there's like multi-step little like falls and pools. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our heavy packs down. We're going to get down to the bottom and then um, DQ scouted it further further up beyond that and it just becomes a dry creek bed or a river bed. So the good thing is that we won't have to cut the trail from there on. We'll just follow along the riverbed. So what we're gonna do is take our packs down there and then we're gonna cut uh, a path so that we can take the canoes down because there's a section where, like I said, it drops down about 65 meters. So we're gonna probably rope the canoes down and then we're gonna uh, portage from there to the dry creek bed. And then from there, we're gonna portage on. So it should be interesting. Right now it's three o'clock. Um, we've only progressed, how, how, what's the distance we went so far? Okay. In five hours exactly. Okay, so 7.4 kilometers in five hours uh, exactly. So, of course, it's just over a kilometer an hour. So it's obviously not very fast, but that that's kind of what we were expecting. We knew it was going to be challenging. So, all right. So we're coming to our most challenging spot. So let's see how this goes. So, the journey starts. This is the descent. You can see here there's, uh, there's not much water, but it trickles down in little cascades. see here you see the river cascades down into little pools you can see the drop here falls down in multi stages and makes its way around the bend so we're just gonna cross the river here hopefully without falling now this is what we're gonna be dealing with crash through the bush so we're gonna have to clear this on our way back so we can get the canoes through. This is pretty thick. So we're just going down and uh, DQ was mentioning that there's some steel beams down here, which is kind of odd. I don't know if it was uh, probably used for the logging area, most likely. Here we go. Here's the. There you go. There's the metal. There's a big log. For sure, people like me. There's another steel uh, beam here. What's that? So, if you can see here, there's huge boulders where the river runs uh, 
underneath and it continues down that way so we're just gonna trek into the bush and make our way down looks like we're coming out to the riverbed Chakwa River and very little water. Not surprising. I didn't want to disappoint these guys. So is this where the split is? So this, look, I gotta look on a GPS. Cause I guess at this point it really doesn't matter uh, which way we go, it just as long as shorter. Because I think this, the left one is the longer one. Cause it goes up and around. Yeah. Yeah, how much? <laughs> At this point, we decided to change our plans for bringing the canoes down. So it's a tangled mess here, but this is what we're going to come down. We're going to bring the canoes down here, slide them down, save us uh, having to cut through the bush, and then we'll enter the bush uh, behind us. It's a gorgeous spot, that's for sure. We then headed back after deciding to drive the canoes down the falls like the logs were many years ago. But it looks like solid. Here's the pile of logs at the top of the drop I was referring to earlier. Despite the fact they are falling apart, you can see they had some form and function in driving the logs down the falls. Quite possibly a shoot. So we're just in the, in the river now, and this is the part that there's a series of uh, cascades you see behind me here. So uh, instead of going in the forest and trying to cut uh, a path through, what we're going to do is just rope it down and there's going to be another guy down at the bottom. And once we get right down to the bottom, then we'll portage the rest. first part was really just a warm-up. Here's a bigger drop. There's one uh, section in the middle that kind of levels up and then it drops uh, again further down. So you can see Bill's getting down to the bottom and he's gonna get uh, ready to get the canoe.
This section was the lower part of the falls, which didn't need ropes. As you can see, the terrain was pretty gnarly to portage the canoe, but it saved us a bunch of time clearing a trail through this section. <laughs> nice recovery. Nimble like a belly goat. Even without a canoe, the footing was treacherous, so it wasn't surprising when stuff like this happened. <coughs> There's a man down. You okay? Do you want me to carry it? Nope. No? I just, I stepped down there. And it slid? Yeah. And I just wanted to throw it up there. Okay. Uh, I think it was kind of uh, to the left. Actually, you know what? If you want to let uh, Bill or me, me go first, we can show you the way. Yeah, I think it was left. Yeah. Uneven terrain, boulders everywhere, slippery rocks, rotten logs, and holes everywhere. It couldn't get any worse. Watch the rock Sean steps on next. Oh, oh! That old rock moved, you okay? Yep. That could easily have been an ankle twister, which is why balance, flexibility, and quick reaction is crucial in these circumstances. See, this rock is super slick, and a lot of these rocks move, and so the footing is not the greatest. Nice job, Sean. Oh, oh. <laughs> I did get it. <laughs> With no water in sight, we continued down the riverbed, now on foot. So the interesting part of this uh, side of the Shakwa River, oh, DQ fell. Um, is that on certain topo maps, like the Canada one, uh, maybe Toporama, I think, it doesn't show this branch of the river. In fact, it, uh, not at all. Um, although some maps, like mine, from Cal Topo, does show this one, and this is the one that I had planned to go down because it shows that it, there's a creek and it gets shorter. But if you look here, there is no more water. It might be deep inside or it might not be there might not be water at all. There's a little bit of water going down the other creek, but again, it's not enough to paddle or even dragon canoe. So we're just taking the boulders, hops, oops, hopping across the boulders and uh, just going down the riverbed as long as we can stay on our feet. I'll show you the riverbed. Minus water. There's water? There's a little bit of water? Where did disappoint you? <laughs> Alright, there's a little bit of water. There we go. So the river obviously narrows here. We've got some pools of water, but we're just gonna continue down.
Ya. It's a long way down, eh? So we're still making our way down the creek bed, but we're seeing, uh, found another artifact of the logging area. It's a saw blade. And, uh, is it over there? Oh, look at that. Wow. Check that out. Yes. We're uh, having spaghetti and we're having opera at the same time. <laughs> so today promised to be a lot of slogging, probably in the bush more so than paddling. I did something to my finger, I just portaged to the river and I can't straighten my finger out. You see here?